Let's turn to Bill Stone now for more analysis on these bank earnings uh, from today. He's chief investment officer at Avalon Investment and Advisory. Bill, good to see you again. Welcome back. Thanks. Thanks to the consumer. Huh? I mean, we keep hearing how they're helping the retailers. They're helping the banks now as well, aren't they? Exactly. I mean, I think it's exactly the thing we talk about with the overall U.S. economy. It's really the consumer keeping things together because manufacturing is, you know, arguably in a recession. Seeing a lot of the similar thing on the banking side, not as much demand from the business side of the equation, but the consumer just seems to have, uh, you know, no real cracks in it yet. You know, Wells Fargo is kind of a separate issue. They've had issues that they've been dealing with for some time. But if you put Wells Fargo aside, um, most of the major banks had some pretty solid results in investment banking uh, and also in some cases trading as well. That's true. I mean, you know, the the investment banking was pretty good. Yeah, I mean, there's specifics like Goldman Sachs didn't do as much mergers and acquisitions mm -hmm. business, but they're still ranked number one. So it's more like that business just didn't have a big quarter. Um, so you're right. They did actually have a pretty decent job on the uh, in general for those involved in the capital markets as well. Do you have favorites in this group right now? You know, most of it's interesting, just happens to be, uh, we do like J.P. Morgan quite a bit. You know, you're talking, uh, it looks very inexpensive, um, you know, certainly has a very broad portfolio. Uh, and then you also get a dividend of 3% uh, while you're kind of, I'll say, waiting or whatever you want to say. Uh, and it looks obviously very secure. So I think um, actually a lot of these names we talked about, we do like Goldman, uh, despite the kind of, I'll argue, transitory issues uh, that they had in their earnings uh, this quarter. Could the fly in the ointment, though, be the trade situation? I know the banks are domestically based, so the international economy may not um, impact them quite as much as it would otherwise. But what about trade? Yeah, I mean, so City has more international exposure. We actually do like that as well, happens to be. But the interesting thing is, you're right, I think the more the issue is trade, the global economy, if you continue to see a big slowdown, and that does weigh further on the U.S. economy, um, certainly that could be exactly the fly in the ointment. We have some sort of recession that kicks in. That's certainly going to hurt the banks. Uh, we think they're in much better capital position, so it's not the severity that you saw in the, in the uh, Great Recession. Uh, but that's kind of the, the worry that I think is probably holding them back. Uh, we don't think there's a recession imminent, so uh, I do think there's some attractiveness there. Quickly, it doesn't help that the Fed's cutting interest rates right now either, does it? It is hard part. I mean, the, the, the yield curve is very, uh, you know, the difference between what they, you know, get deposits and what they lend out is, is has a small differential, which is usually what they make uh, extra money on. So that is part of the, you know, headwinds, I guess you'd have to say for the banks as well. Bill Stone with Avalon Investment Advisory. Again, thanks for joining us tonight, Bill. Thank you.